Welcome to Dig Deeper, a Leaky Foundation video cast. My name is Beth Green, and today we're talking with Dr. Jill Preetz. My name is Jill Preetz, and I'm a biological anthropologist. I work at Iowa State University, and specifically I study primates, primate behavior and ecology, and I study wild chimpanzees currently. So why is this type of research important? What can it tell us about ourselves and our evolution? One of the reasons I study chimpanzees is because I love chimpanzees. Um, I think they're interesting for their own sake, but I think that they're incredibly important too in terms of what they can tell us about our, our own species and specifically how we came to be um, what we are today. And so what were these earliest ancestors of ours like six million years ago or so. And I study chimpanzees that live in a, a very different environment than most um, chimpanzees that have been studied to date, and that's the savanna environment. And I chose that because it's similar to what we think our earliest bipedal ancestors lived in, and so an open savanna, um, not a forest. And so I, I really do think they can inform us at least to come up with hypotheses or to support hypotheses that have been posed about our, our own lineage. Who or perhaps what inspired you to get into this field of research? It was interesting. I came to do what I do sort of in a roundabout way. And I just took a class in college in anthropology. I always loved animals, but I never thought I could be a primatologist, that was just sort of not something you aspired to be um, where I was from. So I took a class and I said, this is great, people can do this, and I just kept taking more classes. And then I actually volunteered and I worked with chimpanzees and that just ruined me, and uh, in a good way. And so I decided I had to work with chimpanzees, that's what I wanted to do. And I did study other species, but I eventually got to the point I am today, and that's where I have my own project, and I've been studying chimpanzees now for 11 years. And of course, a number of people, too, have, have influenced me, my professors in college, um, Jane Goodall, of course. A number of people along the, the way have, have helped me get where I am. Have you ever had a eureka moment? What was it like? You know, I feel like I have a lot of eureka moments that are ongoing, and I don't know if I really reached my eureka moment yet, because when I started working with wild chimpanzees, I had experience with chimpanzees in captivity, and I had read, of course, what everyone has, has written about chimpanzees at other sites. But when I started, I felt like, do I even know what a chimpanzee is like? Because they're so different, and, and obviously I recognize the variation, and we're, becoming to, we're, we're coming to recognize variation in chimpanzees more and more as we study them at different sites. But I feel like I'm constantly learning, and they're constantly steering me in different directions. So I'll be interested in one thing, um, they'll do something pretty amazing, like hunting with tools. I mean, that was something I could never predict. And just, um, Gosh, it, it seems like every year there's, there's something different that leads me to rethink how I think about not only chimpanzees, but human evolution. So I feel like I'm, I'm constantly having these moments, and I have many of these moments when I'm in the field, when I'm walking home at night. So I follow chimpanzees all day, and then I'll walk home at night, and sometimes I have to walk a couple hours. And in those moments, I think a lot about everything and sort of digest what I've seen. And uh, yeah, I feel like it's an ongoing thing. I don't know if I've had my eureka moment yet, but there are a lot of them, yeah. Tell me about a time you had a challenge or a setback in your research. I think that my research is very challenging, but it's part of the reason I, I like it. I really feed off of challenges. And one thing is that I really enjoy the physical challenges of being in the field. It's my favorite part of my job, is to be with chimpanzees all day long. We have a very long day, 15 hours at least. It's very hot most of the time. One thing, I guess, though, that is really the most difficult thing for me is to get close to my subjects and um, get a little too uh, emotional something happens and that's been really hard for me. As a scientist, I obviously you want to be very objective, but also I think we have to admit our, to ourselves that we're human and so we do tend to become somewhat emotionally attached to our, our subjects to varying degrees and so that's something that's been difficult. I have a lot of investment in my subjects. Um, I feel very protective of them in certain ways. 
And so I, that's really difficult for me to sort of balance being an objective scientist and someone who is emotionally involved as well. So that's a difficult challenge for me. What is your favorite thing about being in the field? My very favorite thing about the field is just to be out with the chimpanzees by myself. It's a very peaceful feeling and also when you're when you're by yourself they're very relaxed and so it was one of the my main challenges was just habituating these chimps in in this habitat to get used to people and not been done before and even though they are used to us you know they're not so used to us that that they would come up and sit right next to us which is good I want that but they're much more relaxed when I'm there by myself and they do just kind of ignore me. They go about their business and I really can just sit there and try to understand what's going on in the society. And I feel like I'm a, I've, I've learned so much, but yet I'm a long way of understanding exactly what's going on in their society. And that to me is, is one of the best feelings. I really like doing that. What do you think makes us human? Oh, what makes us human? That is an excellent question. I don't know if I have an answer for that. Um, you know, I tend to, I have to say, as a, as a primatologist, I, I, I definitely recognize that we're apes. I tend to look at the similarities between ourselves and chimpanzees that I study, whereas an anthrop as an anthropologist, I want to look at the differences. That's what's going to inform us most. I can't help but look at the similarities. I think that's sort of a natural reaction as well. But one thing that does stand out, I've become more and more interested, is spoken language. And I definitely think it makes us human on one level. I feel like I at least don't understand a lot of what's going on with chimpanzee communication, but it is very different. And so I, I tend to think that spoken language is is crucial, as many other people have, have maintained. Um, that's a very difficult question. If you could find the definitive answer to any human origins question, which one would it be? I wish I could be a fly on the wall at the time when our own species, what led to us, when there was a split between what led to chimpanzees and to our own lineage. and basically the origins of bipedalism, I would love to be around at that time. And there, I guess there are a number of questions, but you know, what drove bipedalism? There's so many hypotheses. I think that's really interesting, but I, I am interested in, in our ancestors, you know, six or seven million years ago. So I would love to be a fly on the wall at that time. <laughs>